So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, what they're asking us to do is given each set of vertices, determine whether the parallelogram QRS or QRST is a rhombus. Um, is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square? Okay, so what we need to do first is plot the points. So Q is negative 5, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Q. R is 5, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. S is negative 1, 4. Negative 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And T is negative 11, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. T, and that's S. OK, so does that look like a square? Camilla, let's take that out of your um, ear, please. So does that look like a square? No, no. no, doesn't look like a square, does it? But we need to show it's a square. So let's go ahead and now, let's go ahead now and go back through what are the differences between a rhombus, a square, okay, and a rectangle. So first of all, Mm -hmm. Let me actually do this in order. So the first thing we talked about was rectangles. Now remember guys, these are all, all of these are rectangle, a, romb a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square are all parallelograms. So they all have the same things as opposite sides are congruent. So since they already said this is a parallelogram, we already know these two sides are equal to each other, right? Yeah? We already know these two sides are equal to each other, right? We already know that they're parallel to each other, right? Because remember when we did this for parallelograms, we said, hey, determine if these two sides are equal to each other, right? Determine if these two sides are equal to each other. That's what we had to do to determine if it was a parallelogram. We already know it's a parallelogram, so we already know that's true. Then we, you know, we also look for, hey, determine if the slopes are equal, right? If the slopes are the same, then it's a parallelogram. But we already know it's a parallelogram. Then another thing we looked at was the diagonals. Now, remember, for it to be a parallelogram, the diagonals had to bisect each other, right? But guess what, guys? That's the same thing for all of these, too, right? The diagonals bisect each other. We know that. But there's something different about each one of these diagonals. If I draw the diagonals for each of these figures, they all bisect each other. We know that. But what are the only two figures where the diagonals are equal in measure? What is the only two figures where the diagonals are equal in measure? The what? The rectangle. rectangle and the square. So if I go ahead and do the distance formula of the two diagonals and they're equal in measurement, then what do I have? Either a rectangle or a square. And if they're not equal in measurement, then what do I have? A rhombus, right? Then, how do I determine if it's a rectangle or a square, if they're both the same? Well, what is, di what is the same about the rhombus that's different than the square or the rectangle? There's one more difference, and it has to do with a flight triangle. Right triangle. The diagonals of a rhombus and a square are perpendicular. So if I can determine it's a rectangle or a square, if I want to determine which one is it, I can take the slopes of the diagonal, and if the slopes are opposite reciprocals, then I know that it's going to be perpendicular. All right? So what we need to do in this case, ladies and gentlemen, is now apply the distance formula. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to do the distance of QS. So remember, the square root of, let's do the distance here. Square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Doing the distance formula. So in QS, I'll label this as x1, x2, y1, y2. So what I have is negative 1 minus negative 5 squared plus 4 minus 12 squared, and then QS, and then I'll do TR. 
And then for TR, I'll label this x1, x2, y1, y2. So here I have 5 minus a negative 11 squared. And x1, did I do this right over? Negative 5, OK. All right, I like doing x2 first. So that would be negative 11 minus 5 plus 4 minus 12 squared. All right, so now let's go ahead and figure them out. So all I did was I plugged in what x1 and x2 were for each one of these. Zach, can you flip that over for the second time today, please? So negative 1 minus a negative 5, well, that's going to come in double negative. So therefore, go like that. So negative 1 plus 5 is going to be 4 squared plus 4 minus 12 is going to be a negative 8 and negative 8 squared. So therefore, that's 16 plus 64. 16 plus 64 is going to be the square root of 80. All right. Now, we don't need to know the exact measurement of the square root of 80 um, because we know that 9 times 9 is 81. So it's, it's going to be an um, irrational number. But we want to be able to determine, is this going to be the same? So we have negative 11 minus 5, which is 16 squared, and then 4 minus 12 is going to be negative 8. Okay, And ladies and gentlemen, can we determine 16 squared? I don't know off the top of my head. Anybody with a thing? Is there anything? 16. 15 times 15 is 225. 16 times 16, I cannot. I should remember. 17 times 17 is 289. 256, I should have known that. So anyways, I have 256 plus 64. Well, that's going to be uh, 60. That would be 320. So ladies and gentlemen, do they, are the diagonals equal to each other? Huh? Are the diagonals equal in measurement? 1 is the square root of 320. 1 is the square root of 80. Is those equal? No, they're not equal. So they're not equal, then it has to be a? Rhombus, right? Because a rhombus is the only one where the diagonals are not going to equal measure, or not, your diagonals are not going to be equal. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, this is a rhombus. Okay? And that's it.